you're having a good day today. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be looking at the parable of the early and later workers today. Our hymn, it's the hymn, Oh, I, How I Love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in mine ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Our passage comes to us from Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Again he went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. He said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? As it goes on, he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. When they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden in the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give this to this last man the same as you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things, or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last, for many are called, but few are chosen. All right, back to the beginning of the account. One of the things we need to understand about the Lord is that the Lord is looking for laborers. And in this day and age where people say, um, and it's not that you believe in work salvation, but the Lord's looking for laborers. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for workers. It's a part of loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so don't let, don't let people who teach faith only convince you that you don't have to work. This is what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for laborers. That's the first point. But like I said, one of the other things from the account that we can that we can learn and understand and appreciate is that we are saved by grace. As the the parable goes on and he starts people start being paid and you have the the last make the same amount as the first even though there had been no agreed upon price even. The Lord just said, "I'm going to give you what I what is right." And as that's happening, and the, the last are paid first, and they start, the, the early workers start complaining, and he says, take what's yours, go your way. I wish to give this last man the same as you. I, I, I tell you what, one of the things that's interesting is to put this in context. And we should always put verses in context, of course. But I want you to back up and look in Matthew 19. And at the end of Matthew 19, it's the account of the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler comes to Jesus, and Jesus tells him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have, there in verse 21, and give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. He didn't tell everybody to come follow him. Not literally, but he told the rich young ruler to do that, and the rich young ruler does not do that. Now, the young man goes away, and then Jesus says to the disciples, talks about riches, 
And Peter speaks up and Peter says, We've left all and followed you, therefore what shall we have? I want you to notice that language. Jesus says to them, talks about what's going to happen. And then he says, Many who are first will be last and last first. And then you have the account of the labors. But we might notice as this goes on, we are very, very close to entering Jerusalem at this point. So, to look back in the passage, we are quite late in the Lord's ministry. We are quite late. And he tells this rich young ruler the same thing he told the same thing he told Peter, James, and John. Follow me. Now, I know the rich young ruler did not follow him, but he could have. But then Peter says, we've left all. What do we get? And then the Lord gives the parable. Now, I think in the parable you see there, there may be different things being discussed, but the same language is used. The last will be first. That same language is used in chapter 19 and in chapter 20. So the last will be first and the first last, for many are called, but few chosen. And there's different ways we could look at it. But just consider how we're saved by grace. We are not saved based on how much we have done. Peter and James and John and the other apostles had done, they did more than we will ever do. Ever. And they did more than that rich young ruler did. I understand the rich young ruler didn't follow. But they had given up all. And yet we receive the same reward in the sense of heaven, in the sense of heaven itself. When you think about Jews and Gentiles, and I think that may be a, another key application, you have Jews who have been serving the Lord their whole lives. And then you have Gentiles coming on the scene. And they have the same reward. We are not saved based on how much we have done. We are saved by grace. And so we need to understand that. Yes, we, the Lord is looking for laborers. But try to pull this in any workplace. Someone who works one hour gets the same amount as someone who works all day. Pull that in any workplace and, and, and see what people say. They'll say, well, that's unfair. Well, why is it unfair? It's because that's a system of wages, of, of work and wages and debt. And while we work in the kingdom, it's a different system. We are saved by grace. Now back to our passage. I think another, another key takeaway from the account is what the Lord wants is for the laborers to be in unity. Hey, is your eye evil because I am good? The early workers start complaining. And he says, friend, I haven't done you any wrong. Don't, don't think that way about your brethren. Okay? If you've, if you've worked hard your whole life and someone comes along late in life, don't look askance at them. Don't look down on them. Be united. See, that, that's the thing. The five-talent person needs to have unity with the one-talent person. The early worker needs to have unity with the later worker. And just rejoice to be in the kingdom together. That's what the kingdom's like. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.